Hey, hey, Tony Gasser here. Listen, I wanted to come on here and talk to you. I'm uh, doing a little cool down right now after my little workout. And it's something I'm trying to get back to, but just be all over the place. I'm trying to get back to that consistency. You know, something I was thinking about just here a second ago and how God is so faithful. So often we we go and we look at the world like me being a young man. I might be not a young man, but 40 years old. I might go look at the rappers. I might see the rappers online and see all they money, like see they jets, see they mansions, see they exclusive watches. And you look at it and you like, man, they got all these trappings of success. But yet, they not they don't have to live righteous. They got these trappings of success and they living in fornication or living in adultery or living in homosexuality, living in fraud and greed and scamming, whatever it may be. And but got the trappings of success, and a lot of times we see that as blessings. And we call it blessings and we will compare our lifestyle. And the thing about it is, is we don't shout from the mountaintop how good God is. It's like Christians got to be mom and hush about the blessings of God. And blessings is not just monetary, but that is a part of it because even the Bible says money answereth all things. But it also says the love of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. A lot of people misquote that online and they be like, is money the root of all evil? And they forget that that ain't what the Bible say. The Bible say the love of money. Meaning you can't worship God and money. But that does not mean that God is against money. It does not mean that God won't bless you with the means that you need in your society. So here's the thing. If your credit score was based on something being attached to your brain that monitors your brain activity and what your brain is releasing into your bloodstream, and the more peace you have, the more money gets put in your bank account. Or the more peace you have, the more currency you have. If peace was currency, if peace could buy groceries, if peace could pay rent, if peace could pay a car note, if peace could pay a utility bill, then God will just pour out in peace. But what do we need? We need dinero. We need money to pay a utility bill. Peace alone won't pay the utility bill. Now, peace alone will help you have the mindset to be able to go to work with a glad heart and earn the money to pay your utility bill. Because if you call the light company and say, hey, I ain't got no money, but I got the peace of Jesus Christ. They would be like, okay, well, hopefully that peace will keep you calm in the dark because we about to turn off your lights. Thank you. God bless you. So when you really start to read your body, Bible, it ain't about read because you might not be able to read. But when you start to connect with the spirit, the Holy Spirit, God is a spirit. When you connect with the spirit of God, what you start to realize is that God flows in your life like a river and what I mean by that is God will move in your life based on what you need in your life and that's what we get people wrong because it's so many it's so many people that think oh God wants you to be broke busted and disgusted oh God wants you to have nothing oh you ain't supposed to tell nobody about what, about what God doing. But see, 
That's, that's a lie from the pit. It's a lie from the pit because people want, they don't want God to get the glory. They don't want God to get the glory. So what they want is for, and see, that's a trick of the, of the enemy. Because see, what the devil want is the devil want the blessings of God to be a secret. And the devil wants you to be shamed about God blessing you with dollars. The devil wants you to be shamed. He wants you to be shamed because while he's shaming you about God blessing you, he is embarrassing you when you're looking at the so-called blessings of his children. Of Satan children. See those who are walking with Satan. And doing what Satan. Is telling them to do. Satan will take and give them. The trappings. Satan will take and give them the trappings. Of success. And we will look at that. And we will equate those trappings of success. To blessings. But then. When a Christian is blessed by the work of their hands and the favor of the Lord, we want to shame them and say, oh, God is not about money. We want to shame them when a Christian is blessed. And I sat here and I thought about that thing and I said, you know what? God is... God so real, Jesus Christ so real, because I'm, I'm, I am unashamedly, unashamedly a devout Christian. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And Jesus Christ is my Savior. And what I set out to do every day is to have more of a heart like Christ every day. Every day, I pray for the strength. And my prayers are not always audible. My prayers are not always words. Sometimes my prayers are my breath. Sometimes every breath is a cry out to the Lord. Because God knows what you need before you need it. God knows what you are about to say before you say it. See, God knows your heart. So see, a lot of times we want to pride ourselves in linguistics and in the ability to pray without ceasing, but in words. See, the Bible says pray without ceasing. What is one thing that does not cease while you are living? Your breathing. So the only way to truly pray without ceasing is to count every breath as a prayer unto God. And see, a lot of times we don't get that. We don't realize that. But I, 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 I sit sometimes with the Lord. And I make my case known unto the Lord. And in making my case known to the Lord, I evaluate my heart. And I evaluate how I'm living my life unto the Lord and I remember the promises of God I remember the promises in the Holy Bible that promises if you die out to self and if you live a righteous and holy lifestyle 
that God will give you the desires of your heart. That God's spirit maketh rich. So says the Bible. And a lot of people don't read the Bible, but they've been told that they are supposed to be downtrodden. And that they are supposed to be broke. And they are supposed to look tore up from the floor up. But who would want to serve a God like that? Who would want to serve a God that cannot deliver his own people? So when you say that God is not about blessings and favor and that God won't move in your finances in what you need to live. See, you need finances to live. You need finances to have a roof over your head. Y'all got to forgive him. I get real red in here for whatever reason. Might not be a little hot in here. But the infrared good for your body. You got to do the study. That might be the toxins trying to release. See, you might not know and understand the spirit of God. When you're lying on God. Because see, a lot of time we want to fit God into the box that we in. So when we in a box of poverty, when we in a box of depression, we want to we wanna say God is a God of poverty. God is a God of depression. God is a God of loneliness. God is a God of misery. See, we want to fit God into what we in. Because we like, well, how can God be God and I'm in this? Not realizing that even when we in that, God is a God of peace. And God is going to deliver. Yesterday, I, I did a, a sale on my site. It's still up on TonyGasAcademy.com. And I made all the courses $40 because I turned 40. But also, I am reminded about the 40 days and 40 nights that God would have Jesus and was it John the Baptist spending the wilderness. And I'm finna go in my own little wilderness, in my own little consistency, in my own little 40 nights at the top of this hill 40 because, because God is saying something to me. He's saying something to me. And what he says to me may not be what he says to you. But I implore you to listen to the Spirit and hear what God has to say to you. See, God is calling us to obedience. He's calling us to obedience. God is calling us to righteousness. God is convicting my spirit in this very moment about the things that he needs me to work on and to change for his glory. See, I ask you to sit with the Lord and to hear what God is trying to tell you. See, God is, is calling us out from among them. God is asking that we separate ourselves from the world and that we become a light on a hill shining bright so that they can see the path so that they can see the way that God has instructed his children to live see what God is saying is that we are looking too much like the world see God saying my children are listening to the same music as the world See, God saying, my children are going to the same nightclubs and strip clubs as the world. 
God is saying my children are doing the same things as Satan's children, but yet calling themselves my children. See, God is calling out right now. And I've never claimed to be a prophet, but I want you to hear what's coming from the Holy Spirit through my spirit. See, God is calling you out. He is calling you out and he is separating you so that you can be consecrated. Because it is not God's will nor his desire that we meet, that we be humiliated. See, God tells us expressly in his word to do the opposite of the Pharisees. See, the Pharisees, they do everything outwardly. See, the Pharisees do everything for a show. See, with the Pharisees, see, God is a trend. God is a fad. God is a way that they can become famous. See, the Pharisees, they want to pray on the street corner to look holy. But their heart knows no God other than the gods they have created. See, God is calling us out. See, we have been trying to look like, sound like, dress like, talk like, and act like the world. We've been trying to blend in, but the children of God are a peculiar people. See, the children of God, it's not about what leaves your mouth. It's about what's in your heart. Not only about what leaves your mouth. Because what leaves your mouth does matter. Because as the word says, it's not what goes in that defiles you. It's what come out. And see, we are being led astray. And some people get upset when I say we. But I don't want to be holier than thou and I don't want to separate myself from the temptation of the adversary because the adversary will test and tempt everyone. As the word said, God tempts no man. But when there is temptation, there will always be a way of escape. See, God is calling us to be different and to be better. He put that on my spirit a long time ago. And I would say it over and over all the time. Be different. Be better. Be different. Be better. That's what God is calling us to. But, but we trying to look like. And act like and feel like the word. See, 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 the Lord convicted my spirit right as I was coming on here. Because as I was coming on here, the adversary had given me something that was going to confuse people. And have people focusing on the wrong part of the word because they know not. See, what you got to realize in, in the spiritual realm, not everybody is beyond milk. Most people are on milk, spiritual milk, and that's all they can digest and process. So you got to be mindful of that. But see, what God is doing is God saying, I want my children to be different. I want the world to be able to see that my children are different. See, the thing about it, and, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something because God also calls for humility. God instructs us to not be of a haughty spirit. God instructs us and lets us know that pride comes before a fall. So God asks that we are humble and lowly of heart. See, lowly of heart sometimes is confused with depression. Lowly of heart does not mean depression. It means humility. And the reason why you need humility, because if you exalt yourself, God can take you no higher. See, if you don't allow God to take you and be the cloud beneath you, 
then you have failed yourself. Be so often we want to praise ourselves and we want to praise money and we want to praise people and we want to praise things and we forget the Holy Spirit. I remember I did a radio interview one time and they said, hey, we just had such and such on here. And he told us he's reading this book by this author named such and such. What are you reading? I said, I don't read books. I read the Holy Bible. And then I write books. Because when I, I read books, but at that time I wasn't reading no books. And I'm, Lord, forgive me for telling that lie. I don't read books. I read the Holy Bible. They say readers are leaders, but I'm asking you to look and see if anyone considers me a leader without being a reader. See, that may be true, but see, what I'm reading is the B-I-B-L-E, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth, the Bible. And from that Bible, everything that you see of me and everything you see with me and everything you see me produce and anything you see me with comes from the Holy Bible. I'm reminded of that little story where the man, he was, he was going through a divorce and he had a lot to split up. And he told the judge, he said, judge, she can have it all. Just leave me my Bible. Because with that, I could get it all back. Now, we shouldn't be going through no divorce when God is in the midst of the marriage. But being humans, we know things happen. See, what God is doing right now is he's getting ready to separate. And you're going to see a clear difference between the children of God and the children of the world. You're going to see a difference in every aspect of life. Your children will be blessed. Your children will be favored. And see, people will look and they will say, they must be favored. But it's not fair. But God says favor is fair because favor is available to us all. See, we don't want to hear that. We don't want to believe that. We don't want to believe that what God has done for others, he will do for you. But see, we, we believe it in word, but not in spirit. And that's why the Bible says to serve God in spirit and in truth. See, I've been known for so many years as a relationship coach, and I don't, I don't mind that. <laughs> the thing about being a relationship coach is every single day I still have to work on my own relationship coach. My own relationship. So I'm not a relationship coach. I'm a relationship student who the teacher has allowed to stand in front of the class and share what I've learned from the lesson. Don't get it confused. And that is why the Lord instructed me to never put in my bio or refer to myself as a guru or an expert. You have never and will never see in my bio, my writings, relationship expert or business expert or life expert. You will never see the word expert because we are forever learning. If you are not learning and growing, you are dying. And you're going to do that anyway. So you might as well do it in style by learning and growing. I got 12 more minutes in here. Doing 30 minutes a day. Y'all forgive me. But my heart, as I was doing my workout, the Lord say, it's time for a shift. And the shift is going to be a shift of excellence. See, what the Lord said is that you can no longer be average to make 
others feel comfortable. See, what the Lord said is that you being above average and you operating in excellence is going to call those around you higher. See, in most ways, people will not be able to relate to you. Ooh, this song is working today. But y'all got to forgive me too, the Lord. And my, when, when that spirit get to flowing, them tears get to flowing. And them tears bring all kind of flowing. Y'all got to forgive me. <clears throat> I might have to. Mm. <laughs> See, listen. See, listen. I was sitting yesterday and I remember being asked to be featured on a song with a gospel artist and he wanted me to talk but he he wanted me to start out with a scripture and the scripture talked about coming before the Lord bold as a lion and the title of the song is called Bold by Uncle Reese. And the Lord, <laughs> he convicted my spirit. But I know that if I am under that attack from the adversary, there's so many others in the body that are under attack. See, one th and I've noticed that God has sent so many of them to me. Because they, they'll book me for a one-on-one -on -one session. And I don't necessarily have the time to do one-on-one -on -one sessions. And I don't always have the energy. And I forgive. I ask for forgiveness to my clients for sometimes be out, being out of energy. But the Lord got to fill me up. And I heard a gentleman say. That's neither here nor there. Let me get back to what the Holy Spirit is saying. See, the Holy Spirit is saying that there is about to be a boldness in the body. Now, let me, t let, me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you are not convicted to come out of your sin, you are not who I'm talking to. This word is not for you. If you don't feel a conviction... About whatever sin it is that is in your life. I am not talking to you. So please do not think or assume. Or think that. This word from the Holy Spirit is for you. If you are in willing sin. I'm not talking about. The sin where the Bible says every man will fall short of the glory of God. See the glory of God is so high. You're going to fall short. But the thing about God is mercy and grace, meaning that your heart is set on perfection. As the Bible says, be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. See, it also says everyone will fall short of the glory of God. But it says be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. You know why? Because the two balance one another. What it means is do not get comfortable and complacent in sin. Because if you are comfortable and complacent in sin, God cannot move in your life, nor can he move through your life. See, the thing what God is about to do, there's going to be what they call worldly success all over and flowing on the children of God. But here's the thing. They call it worldly success, but God knows that this is his world. See, God knows that this success comes from him. And not only will you be blessed, but your children will be blessed and your children's children will be blessed. The blessing on Abraham can be on you. I'm not going to say it's on you. But one thing if you notice about Abraham is that he was faithful. Abraham was faithful. Abraham was not a Pharisee. See, what Abraham was willing to sacrifice and what Abraham was willing to do was when nobody was looking. 
Let me ask you. Are you willing to be faithful when no one can see you? Are you willing to be faithful when there is no reward from man? Are you willing to be faithful when there is no praise from man? Are you willing to be faithful when man is overlooking you for perceived opportunity? Do you understand that if the door is closed, it is not a door that God has made? Because any door that God has made for you cannot be closed. And any door that God has closed for you cannot be opened. <sighs> Got six more minutes. On my son. Holy Spirit may take me a little further than that dog. <sighs> See, you got to get where God can speak to you. You got to get where you can hear the Father. You got to get where the Holy Spirit can minister unto you. See, see, if you walk in light, that's the five minute buzzer. See, if you walk in light, talking like, acting like, and hanging out with. See, it's a difference between ministering to and hanging out with. See, we get it confused. <laughs> See, we try to lie on Jesus and say Jesus was with the prostitutes and Jesus was with the killers and the thieves. Jesus was ministering to. Jesus was not going to the brothel and to the harlot house with the sinners to partake in their sin. See, Jesus was still separated to be consecrated and then be elevated. 